Hey guys, today's video is going to be a book review of Children of Time by Adrian Tchaikovsky. Now, I read this while I was on holiday. It would have been in my favourites video for last month because I finished it before the end of the month, but I pre-recorded that before I went on holiday. So, reviewing it now. Children of Time is an excellent hard sci-fi with very big world building in it. And I really, really enjoyed it a lot. So, the main things that you've got to understand for this book are the fact that, first of all, humanity is a spacefaring civilization. We are more or less unified by this point in the time. Then, you've got to remember that these things will all go horribly, horribly wrong, and we will barely cobble together everything to be a spacefaring civilization again. And then we've got to leave Earth because of the fact that the people from the original spacefaring civilization royally fucked it up. And then you discover that, oh, in fact, what has happened is that part of that time uh, before everyone got fucked up, well, that was spent trying to do some terraforming. And this terraforming was in search of an experiment, and the experiment went wrong. This book is not a book for arachnophobes. <laughs> I can proudly declare that. Uh, I am not an arachnophobe, but at times it felt a little bit like it was trying to make me an arachnophobe, despite that. Because, well, instead of being monkeys that this experiment was gone on, it, uh, it was spiders and spiders become the sort of the, the apex organisms on the planet that has been terraformed. And I loved this, but at the same time, it really did seem like it was trying to make me an arachnophobe because it's very, very, very heavy on the spiders. There are two big themes that I really want to talk about in this book, and the first one of which is perspectives. Different perspectives on essentially the same thing. This is a big theme in the book because it really goes into seeing other people's points of view and seeing people in different ways and just sort of exploring what people come back and forth with and it, I, I'm not doing this justice, but I felt that this major theme was explored extremely well in this book, and honestly, it pays off really, really well in the end. It really allows some interesting subversion of expectations that are really satisfying. Now, subversion of expectations is a thing that people have been hating since Game of Thrones ended, uh, among other things, and that's because they didn't do it very well. Just gonna say that right here. This one subverts your expectations, and it does it in such a way that you actually... It, it works really, really well with the story as a whole. It just... It's really good. <laughs> they do it really well, and I really, really appreciate the way that it's handled in this book. Another major theme that's talked about in this book is the fact of beginning something new versus maintaining something old. Now, this has gone through in a bunch of different stuff, specifically, though, in the whole stuff with Lane and the spiders and Kern in general. There's all sorts of really interesting ways that this is played into, and I really, really appreciated this particular sort of contrast here. There's a lot of really interesting ways that this book plays with this whole idea of do we want to start something new, or do we want to maintain the old, or do we want to do something of both? What do we keep, what do we not? Another aspect of this book that I really liked was characters, specifically the way that the point of view was handled in these, in the, the like, between all of these different characters. So there's like two of them that stay pretty much consistent all the way through. There's Avrana Kern, who she is in different incarnations throughout, but she is the same person, just 
treated differently and working differently throughout the entirety of the sort of book. And there's Holston, who uh, is basically consistent throughout the book entirely. He just goes back to cryo sleep or whatever between sections of his works in this. Um, but then we've got to contrast that with the various spider characters because we go through a bunch of Porsches and a bunch of Biancas and a bunch of Fabians and a bunch of Violas. There's a bunch of these different characters who all have the same name and that can be a little bit confusing at times but they're all different characters, they're all different members of the same lineages and da 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 and each of these what different ones has a point of view of their own and it's really satisfying sort of seeing things play out like generation upon generation upon generation and then that coming back and it really just contrasts the humans versus the spiders because the humans like there is some legacy amount to us but they uh, the old order effectively but the spiders they're something new and we see different layers of their technology being developed we see different layers of things going on da -da 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 -da. it's really interesting to sort of play around with these concepts of what is a person and what is a lineage and what is the good of and da 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 da, -da. and the last thing that I want to touch on in this book is the sort of themes about contrasting characters being messianic. So there are three different characters who can be seen as wanting to be messianic. Uh, they're wanting to be uh, the messiah, they're wanting to be the saviour or the one that sort of is worshipped almost or the way he, or they are trying to keep things going in certain ways. So the first one is Gaian. He uh, is the captain of the ship and he forms this cult of personality around himself and God, it ends up with a really horrible sort of situation with him and he's a really interesting character but also I wouldn't want to be in the same room as him because I would just end up punching him. Like, God, that guy, that guy. There's a lot of interesting themes along that lines and I'm interested to see what goes on in the sequel that I believe there is with this particular bit. But also there's Lane who is an un un unintended messiah effectively. She has to keep people going, she has to try and salvage Gaian's mess, she has to clean up after him, she has to clean up after Holston, she has to try and make sure that everything goes the right way and she's just no nonsense, she's just doing things. And she's the most messianic of the actual human characters, realistically. And then we talk about Avrana Cairn, who she wants to be a messiah in the same way that Gaian does. At the same time, she also learns from her own mistakes about that. She is... Uh, there's a whole host of things that you can say about her. She's not a terribly pleasant character at times, but it's really, really interesting how she changes her outlook because she is effectively the spider's god and knows it. Except she doesn't know the spiders to begin with, but she goes along and it just... the way that she treats herself and learns to treat others is really interesting. So anyway, those are my thoughts on this book. Uh, probably just a load of rambly guff, but I, I had to get it out there and I just really, really enjoyed this book. It's a good book. Really, really good book. If you've read this book, tell me in the comments down below what you thought of it. I would love to know, so down there, please. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you remember to like and share it and subscribe to my channel. Click on the thumbnails over there to see other videos by me. Click on the link in the description to join my Discord, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!